like for instance, the two of you learning how to be better with women, do you guys understand that's offensive to a lot of people? You should get what you get. If you're an ugly dude, you should just have an ugly chick. That's the way the world looks at you. And the idea that you leveled up and got a hotter girl, that's offensive to a lot of people who really like the status quo. So the question would be is, uh, what would be the first steps for a man who is lost, has no purpose, might have dug himself into a hole? What are the first steps for them to un their lives? Well, in order to your life um there's a couple of things like how do we fix the situation and then there's how do we mentally how do we change our mental mind state as far as your mind state one of the things that i found is that a lot of people their lives up because they don't give themselves permission one of my favorite books for that is the subtle art of not giving by mark manson uh, i also really like the power of now like the book flow by mihai just says mihai i actually recommend for guys who are kind of in that rut to adopt reading adopt audiobooks i really think that listening to people who have gone through tribulations who have have gone through vicissitudes that you've never experienced or stuff that you've already gone through and listening to them get through these challenges is incredibly motivating and I, I i found that was very helpful for me i went through a very dark period uh when my father was killed by a drunk driver uh the girl and i broke up uh, the girl i was seeing she she didn't even break up with me she just like when i was deployed to the middle east right after my dad died she just with was with some other dude on myspace um you know i go through a really bad period i, I started developing uh autoimmune disorder all this kind of stuff was happening at the same time and it was one of these situations where I had suffered enough uh, and I found a, a, a set of books and a, and a few mentors to follow. And after that, man, it was just uh, the sky's the limit. It was just a rocket ship, rocket ship up. So that's what I would highly recommend for people is to find a book list. Like we have a book list with MOA. Um, if you guys want to fix your social life, though, like so we talked about fixing what's on, uh, wrong on the inside. If you want to fix what's wrong on the outside, the things that you have to do is are the first four steps in MOA. I would recommend everybody fix their social media. There's nothing that you can do that's possibly that could possibly scale more than having really, really good so social media as a man as far as networking. Uh, one thing we specialize with in MOA is if you want to use social media for your business and your dating life, we're kind of like the perfect place uh, to mesh those two things together. And I personally believe the apex of human existence, other than having a family, is for men to accomplish goals together with other men. Uh, and so in order to do that, you got to learn how networking works as an evolutionary adaptation. And that's what we teach you in the course, uh, try to get you to understand the, these concepts of, uh, you know, being able to offer value to other people, ask for very little in return, and have this incredible group of friends. Uh, one of the things I really look, try to look for uh, and try to help uh, the students or clients that come through my program is I want all of their friends uh, to meet their girlfriends through you. I want all of your friends to get their jobs through you. I want all your friends to find your employees through you. I want all your friends to find your sponsors through you. I, I, you should be the hub of the social wheel that everybody counts on. And so there's different ways to do that. And, uh, but we use a scientific, scientific based approach in order to figure out how to make that work. Awesome. Awesome. That makes a lot of sense. Any uh, insight for that, Luke? I mean, yeah, just the evolution of desire by Dr. David Buzz. Reading books gives you those real life applications of how these things work. Mike, I, I'm sure you know the, the saying feelings like, yeah, facts don't care about yeah, your that feelings. Was like sad That's literally that. like sad. what I'm always based on. Just, all right, man, yeah. like you're a man. Your value is based on your performance and the value you provide to society. You don't wake up and think you're a 10 like some chick on Fresh and Fit. Yeah. You're accepted to provide value. So love that. Yeah. And one thing you were saying yeah. about how you went through a troubling time and then when you went through that troubling time, just kind of listening to what you're saying, is that when you really started looking into personal development and getting yourself better? Or was there times before that while you're in that relationship where you're like, man, I really got to get after it as well? Uh, no, actually, I'd probably say the beginning of for personal development for me was probably 2004. I was stationed at Altus, Oklahoma, uh, Altus Air Force Base. And if you guys have ever been there, there's nothing but tarantulas and snakes. Like the, it's just flat as out there. Uh, I was stationed out there for a couple months. And while I was there, I found Friendster and then, uh, and then I found MySpace. And then there was an advertisement for a thing called Double Year Dating by David D'Angelo. His real name's Eben Pagan. Uh, and and I watched the double year dating course back then in 2004. And it was interesting because it was obviously about dating, but I was like, how much, what are the other things that I could improve uh, through self-help? And just finding some really incredible people, uh, probably in two thousand four years after that, 2008, I started coaching. Uh, and so it was just one of these places where like men helping other men to level up because a lot of times this is the, the dirty little secret. Men leveling up is not so something that's taught in schools and societally, like, for instance, the two of you learning how to be better with women, you guys understand that's offensive to a lot of people. You should get what you get. If you're an ugly dude, you should just have an ugly chick. That's the way the world looks at you. And the idea that you leveled up and got a hotter girl, that's offensive to a lot of people who really like the status quo. So I, I, I started learning about, you know, from people who were smarter than me, 
people who understood business better than me, people who were faster readers than me, people who were in better shape than me. I started learning from as many of these mentors as I probably could, as I possibly could. And from learning from these mentors, uh, man, it just was just so incredibly beneficial, man. You just really level up super fast. When you see something can be done, when you meet somebody like Wes Watson, for instance, the guy went to jail for 10 years for attempted murder. If you meet Ryan Stuman, who went to jail for like five years for selling dope, and then you see these guys are worth hundreds of millions of dollars now uh, from their programs that they teach where they just offer massive amounts of value. You look at yourself, you're like, I didn't go to jail for 10 years. I don't have any excuse to not be able to pull this off. When you meet guys like, oh, there's some guys who are in men of action who are under five foot three and just surrounded by women all the time. Guys in my, in my program who are Indian or Asian, they don't have those excuses that other people have about why women don't like them. If those motherfuckers can do it, why can't you do it? You have no excuse. If Nick Santo Nastasso, who was born with missing two legs and an arm is dating a supermodel, you don't have excuse. And so that's one of the things like seeing mentors actually accomplish goals really fights off the natural excuses that people have the excuses and the copes that people make for themselves. And that's why I think it's just so important finding if you're saying like, what is the number one piece of advice I ever got is when Ty Lopez told, told me to find mentors. So when it comes to being a better guy in general, right, I think there's always a couple sections that they always talk about, right? They talk about fitness, frame, finances, yeah. uh, emotional intelligence, all these type of aspects. And we're talking about mentorship and actually going ahead and trying to get to the actual find personal development or find people that will actually help us in our endeavors. So if you can kind of just give, I know there's probably a lot and I'm sure you can mention thousands on each type of section, but if you can mention one person, these four aspects that people should go ahead and reach out to, right? Like if who's the best guy you would recommend somebody for fitness, for frame, for, you know, dating, for social circle, obviously yourself, but other people like that, do you, do you have a go-to mentors that you recommend people to? So, so remind me of all of them. So fitness, I would probably, and it's a tough one. Fitness, I mean, I really like Grego Gallagher. I think his intermittent fasting stuff has really helped me lose a ton of weight. Um, his weight routines are, are pretty awesome. But, you know, Brandon Carter is also a buddy of mine. So I think he's awesome as well. If you wanted to start a fitness business, I'd probably go with Wes Watson. I would say that's where I would go for that. And then who was the, what was the other one you said? Uh, so frame, frame is, was frame. So that, uh, as yeah. far as frame, I like, I like FitX Fearless. Um, I think he's pretty sharp when it comes to that. I like Rolo Tomasi uh, when it comes to that. Myron Gaines, I like it when it comes to that. Um, then the other, other guy is Justin one? Waller. Oh, yeah. Justin Waller is one of my good friends. I also say Justin Waller when it comes to frame would also be a good one. Good. And then finances? Uh, finances, man, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Probably... I like Ryan Pineda and I, I and, and I actually like um, Graham Stephan and both they kind of have opposite opinions when it comes to this stuff. Um, and you know, another guy who I like as far as finances come is Patrick Bed David. Um, he he seems to have a, an understanding of macroeconomics that I really really appreciate, and he seems to be a little bit less biased than most guys that are on his side of the political aisle. So I actually like PBD as well. And then my man Sosnick. Uh, Sosnick is another one of my good friends. Adam Sosnick would be another guy I'd follow. And then uh, last one, and I feel like no one really mentions this, but how about emotional intelligence? or emotional control emotional control i mean that's jocko willick uh, stoicism yeah it's uh, marcus aurelius jocko willick and um um david goggins that's probably where i'd go i'll tell you one other person who's got emotional control handled and it's dan bilzerian i would probably say the mm. setup by dan bilzerian would be another thing i would go for that was a good book cool 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 awesome yeah. now i think you, you laid that down pretty well sweet mike um you've been doing i'm away for a while now you're now a full-time performance coach I know myself, when I teach something, I learn it better. What would you say is the biggest way that being a full-time performance coach has improved your game? Oh, uh, public speaking, like just constantly be able to public speak. As far as game with women, like uh, there is lit. So because I interview so many interesting people, I have to do two things. I have to watch previous podcasts that they were on. I'll listen to them at double speed and take notes. And then I also listen to audio books. So, so for instance, if somebody wrote a book, so before I, I interviewed Dan Bilzerian, I read his book. Um, and then, and then I interviewed him about it because I've done that because I'm constantly flooded with information from super successful people. When I get into a conversation, whenever there's a room, you guys remember that episode of curb your enthusiasm where they had, they talked about, there were six people at a table and somebody had to be in the middle on both sides. And like, they said, who, who's going to middle. And so Larry David was the middle. I'm usually the middle. Like I have enough things to talk about because I've, you know, read tons of topics. I think being able to do that is, is probably the thing that sort of helped my game the most is that I would never run out of interesting topics to talk about. And by the way, it comes to like, you know, some girls like, oh, I love makeup. I'm like, well, did you see how Kylie Jenner became a 
billionaire from selling makeup, Paris Hilton, what, yada, yada, it doesn't matter, whatever. There's just infinite things that I feel comfortable talking about. And that's very helpful. The second thing I'll tell you is, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you, is I don't know if it helped my game because I'm in a relationship right now, Right. but, um, but having a panel show and, and making reaction videos and having things that people react to like memes, um, and, and videos like that clips that I post on my Instagram, it just really gets the attention of a lot of women. There's a lot of women who it's pretty rare when I message a girl now and she doesn't immediately write me back uh, because she looks at my IG and she sees that, that I'm putting up enough social proof up there. There's nothing special about me. I'm not special, but what's happened is a couple of the things that I posted caught her attention. And so she's more likely to, to respond when that comes. So I'd say those two things are probably the best thing, Be, being able to talk about any topic and also having social proof on my social media.